Hello, today it's gonna be critical whirlwind charge release lightning standard build. This one is probably the fastest mapping build you can do. Getting damage on this one might be a little bit tougher, but when you clear maps in under 2 minutes, it's definitely not a big of a deal. So let's get into it. Skillboard should look something like this. Let's start with the whirlwind. It's convert lightning damage, additional lightning damage, confidence, quick attack, and winding wind. With spell activation while channeling into charge release with additional lightning damage, slaughter. You can use preserve man instead of slaughter. Area effect, find weakness, and projectile acceleration. For movement abilities, it's leap attack and roll with disarm. For attack enhances, vital strike with time acceleration, increased duration, and enhance effect. Instead of using vital strike early, you can use release element, but vital strike is gonna be more damage. Shadow Provocation with buff activation when hit, Hushet Shout, Lingering Shout, and Enhance Effect. For your Toggles, you can use Enduring Pain for Defense Enhance Toggle. For Offensive Attack Seal, it's gonna be Condensed Elements or Critical Chance, just depending on what you have, what your stats are. Then for Defensive Seal, you can choose Elemental Domain, Chaos Resist, Elemental Resist, whatever defensive defensives you need at the moment. And then Shout of Justice, just to remove your CC with buff activation upon crowd control. Charms, you want to start with Castor to pick up Elemental Damage Amplification, then into Akban to pick up Lightning Damage Amplification. And the other two is kinda depending on what you need. You can go Boreal for some armor amplification and melee damage for the whirlwind or low for projectile damage and dodge it which is only gonna work on the charge release for the charms themselves you always aim for critical rate plus critical damage and then whatever you can get you can do hp some resistances or just damage multipliers for relics there are two choices at the beginning depending on how much damage you have if you don't have a big enough tooltip, around like 10, 10 mil damage on single target, you can start with Akiban, then go pick up Lightning Orb for the damage, use damage amplification on that one and skill rune cooldown recovery speed. But when you have enough damage and you want to switch out, pick up as a passive Lightning Penetration and switch to Sebda for elemental damage amplification which is Mental Stimulation, you want to pick up Skill Rune Cooldown Recovery Speed and you can go into Mental Stimulation Effect or you can just pick up Damage Taken Decrease. The third one should be Spica. Even if, you, if we don't benefit from Physical Damage, Chance to Deal Double Maximize Damage is really nice, especially it's 5%. Or you can switch into Level, pick up like Attack Speed if you need it, but I would say Spica is much better. For the fourth one, it's by default, it's gonna be Boreal, as you can only get 15 levels in here, so you just pick up extra HP. Zodiac, so the main idea is that you always want to spend your points onto the specializations, so the first spec opens up and you spend 22 points, second spec 45, and third spec 70, so don't forget those. So you want to start with Aphros, then into Explorer. If you're gonna do Armor plus dodge, you can actually spec into dodge instead of armor here. So it's gonna be Wanderer instead. Jump. Prella. You can pick up any resistance that you need the most. Petal. Then Dawn first spec. I always suggest for the new players to spec into Dawn. It's really nice specialization. So what you're looking for in here is uplift, overpower and then strike damage amplification. And when you complete the quest in the Saluto, there are two quests. It's gonna give you two extra points in here, so you can do Convert Mana. But don't do Convert Mana too early, because Convert Mana actually leeches your HP and converts it into Mana. Flash. Namura. Float is basically optional one. You can do Float when you have extra points and you want to pick up all the elemental damage nodes in here, but don't do it too early, only later into the game. Hail is spec 2. In here you want to pick up Tempest, Strength Damage Amplification and Sharpness. 
But later into the game, when you get two extra points in here, you actually want to remove sharpness and go on to element observer. You either remove sharpness or strike damage amplification, whatever gives you more damage. But element observer is gonna be much better than anything in, in here. Then scent. Artemis. Artemis is basically, basically optional. If you pick up Artemis, HP on kill, you can pick up convert mana and you're not gonna die on map. But be careful on when you kill bosses. Deadly poison. Maglet is again optional. If you have enough stats, you can pick up even melee damage, area damage, projectile damage. Everything is actually gonna work. Projectile damage and area damage is gonna work on charge release, and melee damage is gonna work on whirlwind. Plague. If you have extra points, you can actually pick up critical damage in here, especially early into the game, and critical rates. Pharma. Pharma is defensive one. It's up to you if you want that HP amplification. Hunter, time of the hunt is important one. Blacksmith, blacksmith is again, is depending on what you are looking for. I'm playing hardcore, so I pick up uh, Amplifies Damage Shaken, but reduces critical damage shaken decrease. This is really nice one. So you don't, if you don't want to get crit, if you're not doing, doing dodge, you can actually pick up HP amplification also, which is going to increase your HP by, by a ton. If you are doing dodge, pick up perfect dodge instead. Perfect dodge is really nice. First spec is sympathy. In here you want to pick up strength damage jump. You want to pick up HP absorb limit. Whenever you pick up HP absorb limit, you can remove the HP on kill node in your zodiacs. Because this is going to be enough to sustain yourself, even when you are using convert mana. Capable and attack speed jump. If you, if you don't need that much attack speed, Instead of what you can do, you can go for HP Amplification. If you're really focusing to get more damage, you can remove Attack Speed, Capable, and just go into Area Damage Amplification, but this is only gonna work for Charge Release. Then Mold. Three points in here is basically to equip the Zodiac Stones. Itemization. So for the weapon, we are looking for a Two-Handed Sword or a Staff. Staff is going to give you some resource cost dampening if you have some issues with the, with the mana. And Sword is going to give you more weapon range. What we're looking for on the stats is a highest critical base possible. So for the Sword is 12. For the affixes themselves, we are focusing on gear critical rate. This is the most important one. After that, whatever you get is good. Weapon attack damage, lightning damage flat, critical damage, weapon attack damage flat, or weapon speed. For the chest, or for any type of uh, piece of equipment, you're looking for your main defense type multiplier, in this case it's armor, then some HPs, and for the suffix, any resistances that you need, or hit rate, if you lack some hit rate. For the neck, we are looking for critical damage implicit neck. After that, it's just lightning damage flat and elemental damage multiplier. After that, again, you can pick up some stats or resistances, whatever you need the most. For the ring, we are looking for attack critical rate implicit ring. For rolls, we are looking for attack critical rate, the most important one. Then critical damage, some elemental damage multiplier and attack speed. After that, you can pick up whatever you need the most. Stats or HPs. For the boots, the main difference is going to be that you want to get movement speed on those. Upgrades on the skill board should look something like this. So for the whirlwind, we are looking for the origin awakening, for damage shaking dampening while channeling. For the links, we are looking for fighting spirit grand approach. You can switch either of those for the winding wind if you don't have. Another thing is that you want to keep your quick attack. Because it's going to be hard to stack your attack speed with a two-hander sword or two-hander staff. So you should switch your quick attack basically in the end when you're already really close to 5 attack speed without the quick attack. For charge release, you want to go into source for the max angle and projectile count. This is a really good one. For the links, you want concentrated area damage, strike. Mana Storm, of course, additional lightning damage. You can switch additional lightning damage when you have enough flat for another amplification, for example, elemental damage amplification, but 
most likely just flat lightning damage is gonna be good for you for quite some time we have find weakness in the middle find weakness is good till you hit like 500 or 400 critical when you have that much you can switch into any other one at the same time if you're using find weakness you can use seal of critical chance but depending on your stats condensed elements can be better but that will require some testing another big change in here is that i'm using vital strike with decreased duration vital strike is gonna fall off as more crit damage and crit rate you have so at some point you want to switch it in for the release element which is gonna be more damage but then also when you use the quiz duration test your enhanced damage because sometimes the quiz duration might reduce your damage but most of the time it actually increases and then we want to use seal of striking but we want to awaken it into rapid seal so it's gonna be source awakening you can use either seal of striking or you can use totem activation when using enhanced skill and uh, pick up weekend totem but i think rapid seal makes more sense early into the game another change is that we have pen slash instead of leap attack and when you awaken your pen, sl pen slash to plus two use count you can actually remove roll it's not gonna be it's not gonna give you that much movement ability anymore just a last piece of advice if you have your armor capped and you're gonna have it capped with shadow provocation you can actually do a little bit of dodge it's gonna be much better but remember first of all you want to cap your armor so this would be it thanks for watching and i hope you're gonna enjoy this build have fun have fun grinding gds and see you next time with another build